So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. We are very, very grateful indeed that you've managed to join us. A very warm welcome to each and every one of you for um, making it this morning. Um, I mean, Washington, D.C. time. Um, we are grateful that you're here for the technical review of the Climate Investment Fund's draft youth engagement strategy, which has been pulled together by the stakeholder engagement um, team within the SIF. This timely strategy is primarily to help us streamline the SIF's ongoing efforts and our interest to strengthen youth inclusion in our interventions. It comes therefore as no surprise that the youth engagement strategy, which we are calling YES for short, is an output of a SIF youth intern in the person of Mr. Freeman Eloho Eluowo, who is connected. Mr. Lowe came on board as an intern in September um, of 2020, famous 2020, and has over these last few months carried out a number of interests and work with us. He's attended and participated in a number of um, webinars, which has helped to um, pull ideas from youth leaders on how issues around climate action are being addressed during this COVID, um, should I say, era. And as part of this work, he's done a lot of research, a number of interviews, and these have accumulated in the drafting of this um, um, strategy. And in line with the SIF's um, notable inclusive business model, um, our meeting this morning is to seek your feedback and recommendations to help us further strengthen the storyline of our yes, and to sharpen the value addition of this document, both to youth leaders, youth groups, and also to the SIF. Um, to be able to do this, we've been very successful in lining up a team of peer reviewers who have seasoned experiences as, le as youth leaders with multi-sectoral expertise in climate action. I would introduce them, but I think um, it would be better for them to also introduce themselves as a way of further building our network of youth experts. I'd also like to mention that amongst us um, is a group of youth leaders from the Africa sub-region who have been instrumental in sharing their experiences with addressing COVID and climate, um, addressing COVID and climate in their respective countries. And um, I must say with um, joy that the experiences have found have really come to inform the design of this um, strategy. And if 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 they are okay with it, I just um, mention their names. They are Miss. Kona Koli from Liberia, Ms. Gold Wanam from Nigeria, Ms. Grace Ananda from Kenya, Mr. Gawusu Ture from Ghana, Isaac, Free, uh, Isaac Basson from Liberia, um, of course, Freeman Eloho from Nigeria, and Sena Aluka from Togo. We are very grateful for the ideas that they've helped um, pull together into generating this um, very useful and timely piece. And to be able to maximize our time for this morning, let me quickly um, show you the proposed agenda. Um, Renata, if you can quickly give us the aha. So this is going to be our very brief one hour, very tactful meeting. Um, I'll be calling on my practice manager, the head of the Climate Investment Funds to give us a brief introduction to the SIF and of course to give you a rationale for our interest in this um, youth strategy. And we'll then pass it on to Mr. Eloho to give us the presentation of the document um, very briefly because I know you've all had a chance to see it. We'll open up for our peer reviewers to each give us five minutes, um, a summary of the main contributions and main messages that they have in addition to what they've already shared with us in writing that, that is. And then we'll open up for um, brief um, general discussions. And then please feel free at any point in time to throw a comment to throw a suggestion in the chat box. But overall, I believe this is going to be a very um, interactive, well-structured um, session. As I mentioned, uh, Mafalda is here. Mafalda is the head of the SIF, a position she's held that has um, really stimulated, increased interest in um, the SIF's um, multi-sectoral interventions on the ground, but most importantly, helped to shape the new set of programs which will be transforming the face of climate action going forward. So ladies and gentlemen, permit me to um, welcome Ms. Mafalda Duarte. Mafalda, over to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Dora, you can drop the mists. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you very much for being with us in this uh, important discussion. 
um, I I have not met many of you and um, and I have not spoken yet this year with many of you. So my best wishes for 2021 after what has been a very difficult um, 2020. Uh, and the beginning of 2021 has also not been so promising, but we, we keep our hopes very high and we are very confident this will be a great year, certainly for, for climate uh, action. Um, it's my privilege and um, to be here and uh, my interest as well, um, because I have been quite, um, I've taken a keen interest in seeing how we further engage youth in the work we do. Uh, I'm a big champion of empowering youth um, and, and, and maximizing what you all have to contribute uh, to this um, agenda. Um, and I'm gonna explain a little bit uh, why, but I will be very brief because I'm mindful you have the agenda in front of me to keep me on my toes. <laughs> um, let me thank um, uh, Freeman um, for, for being with us and so diligently working with us in putting together this, um, this youth engagement uh, strategy and also welcome um, the other youth experts and colleagues, uh, Joshua uh, Farai, uh, Leah, sorry if I'm mispronouncing uh, your name, and, and Diksha who is with us and we've also had the honor of, of having work on our stakeholder engagement program. You probably, most of you know uh, about the, the climate investment funds, so I'm not going to expand much on this. Um, I think the international community certainly um, and the G8 and G20 countries at the time in 2008, um, they were quite visionary and bold uh, because at the time of the financial crisis, um, they decided to set up uh, these funds um, and, and really provide the incentives and support to developing countries to really make what were at the time even more difficult investment decisions than further down the line. Um, you know, investment decisions in 2009 and 2008 of uh, renewable energy in many countries was a much more costly and riskier proposition than it is today, as an example. Uh, but, that's, but that's the sort of leadership uh, that the developing countries um, exercised with the support of the Climate Investment Funds and our implementing uh, partners. So I, I, I like to say, this is one of the things that I, I really like to say, if it was possible in 2008 to make these type of investment decisions, then certainly it should be possible in 2020 and 2021. Uh, and certainly, you know, when one thinks about the billions and billions of dollars that are being put uh, into the recovery of this pandemic, it certainly, you know, should have, there should be no doubt that uh, the inv these investment decisions should be socially inclusive um, and, and align with our global climate objectives. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, over this, 12, 11, 12 years, depending on how we start counting, um, you know, we have grown what, what we have been doing. We have been enhancing our practices, as you probably well know. Uh, we started off with around 42 or 43 developing countries. We are now at 72, so uh, we are almost doubling our engagement in terms of the number of countries um, the resources that we were entrusted with to support developing countries have also grown from around 5 billion to now eight, more than 8 billion. Um, and, and this year, of course, you know, we are planning on launching several new investment programs in frontier areas um, and mobilize uh, much needed uh, capital. Um, we're quite proud of quite a number of things. One for sure is the results. Um, 
you know, if you if you look at at our numbers in terms of clean power capacity, million people with improved access to energy, uh, or how many people are being, how many million people are being supported to cope with effects with the effects of climate change. Uh, these are quite significant results. Um, so we 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 are very proud. We are equally proud um, in terms of the our stakeholder engagement approach, which goes from the governance level all the way to how we design and deliver programs uh, in countries. Um, so we take a we have a, a governance model where we have multiple observers from different types of organizations, uh, civil society, private sector, women's groups, indigenous people and local community organizations, both from developed countries and developing countries. And we have been enhancing these practices over time. Um, and we, last year, well, you might have seen as well, we concluded this stakeholder engagement evaluation uh, which was very useful taking stock of, you know, the lessons over 10 years. Um, we keep striving to improve and, and, and there were quite a number of useful recommendations there, which we are now looking at how we put into practice, in particularly at the country level. Um, we, we see that there's quite a lot to be done at the, at the country level. But certainly, and I know that this is part of this youth engagement uh, strategy proposal. Um, how can we bring those voices to our to our governance structure? Um, this is, I think, uh, I was glad to see that in the strategy, and something that I'm very keen on uh, hearing more about. Because, as you know, it's it's important to operate at various levels, um, and this is also why you know the the strategy also. Um, brings proposals at the, at, the, at different level, global engagement level, national level, both in terms of the activities, but also activism, outreach. Um, so that, that was um, very good to see. Um, we did, um, just to let you know, it's, it's something that is probably not well known by, by, by many. We probably didn't, we didn't do a sufficiently good job uh, in terms of disseminating it, but a couple of years ago, um, probably two and a half years ago, uh, we 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 did some work in terms of what we call the future of climate action map, um, where we we brought a number of stakeholders together with an institute based in California, Institute for the Future, and we brought a lot of people together that were not necessarily engaged in climate action. Um, to, to brainstorm a little bit, what would it take to move, to move decisions and to move this agenda much more speedily um, and at scale than what we had been seeing um, over the, the last couple of, of decades. I have it actually here with me. It, it should be also on our website. Uh, but what, what is interesting is this was prior to you know, the movements that we are now seeing from the youth groups. Um, one of the areas that was clearly identified as critical to spark this new level of ambition and, and, uh, and, and accomplishments was youth empowerment. Um, so so I, I just want to, to, to reiterate what you very well know, which is, you youth groups um, have a tremendous influence and power. Um, so never, never doubt that. And what, what, we, what we want is to help you um, maximize and, um, and, 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 um, and influence all of the decision makers I mean, first of all, of course, you know, you will be the next decision makers and some of you not far off. <laughs> um, you are already consumers, you'll continue to be consumers, you will be investors. Um, and, and this is another message that I, I, I like to convey. You know, you, you have not just right now, but you, even, you will have even more 
influence. Of course, you can already have an influence on the decision makers. There was an interesting story that, uh, you know, a colleague, Laura is already probably thinking this lady now is going off completely and taking more time. But let me just say, tell this uh, story, which is, um, I, I was, uh, you know, a, a colleague told me um, that uh, he normally engages with, uh, you know, CEOs of the, the, the most uh, carbon intensive uh, companies in the world, the, the 100 most carbon intensive companies in the world. And, and that he had noticed a shift in one of these companies and, and had asked the CEO, um, what was it that uh, drove these changes uh, that, you know, you making such decisions in your company? And the CEO of uh, this uh, company uh, said, well, one day I was in, in my, my home and my, my grandchild came to me and asked me, what am, what am I doing? to protect his future? What am I doing in terms of climate change action? And that was, you know, the, the, the emotional single trigger for this uh, CEO to make substantive changes in his company. Um, so I, this is just, uh, you know, one more example to, to show um, how much influence you have already at the moment and power within you um, and how that will just grow over time. So please use it <laughs> and we will be helping you um, on that uh, journey. We will join forces um, and, and achieve more uh, together. So with that, I very much look forward to hearing uh, the presentation and um, the discussions and your suggestions um, and seeing, you know, how we can best bring um, this into our work. Thank you very much, Dora and everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mafad. I like how, what you said. Please use it and let us join forces and achieve more together. You couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much. And before we do the presentation, I was um, going to quickly ask if there was any super burning question clarification that anyone needed from Mafalda. I'll give the person 15 seconds to ask, but then um, we're just going to roll into a very uh, moving, um, short video. So if there's any comment other than that, I'll just go ahead quickly. to climate change impacts. The local poor people are the main victim of it. People suffer from flood, cyclone, drought, salinity, and river erosion. These environmental disasters are threatening the lives and future of more than 19 million children in Bangladesh. In 2015, I founded a youth organization called Lal Shubu Society. The purpose of my organization was to keep young people involved in the positive change. As a eco-friendly people, I am promoting cycling in my country to our organization. Our members travel to different places by bicycle once a week and try to make people aware about protection of the environment. In many places of Bangladesh, girls cycling is not appreciated. That's why we are arranging bicycle training for girls. So far, more than 100 teenage girls have been trained and many of them bought bicycles. Consequently, they are coming out of fear and becoming confident. The place where I am standing right now will disappear very soon. The people of this area are direct victim of climate change. They are living a uncertain and helpless life. Especially children are at extreme risk. I think journalism is a good way to present their situation to the world. Now I am in a climate vulnerable area of Bangladesh called Mendigo. Here I am providing a mobile journalism training on climate change for teenagers.
can't imagine life without oxygen and oxygen can imagine without tree so i love to plant tree very much as a part of this beautiful planet it's my duty to keep it safe and sound this tree i am planting today will save our climate soon cleanup campaigns are being carried out in different places and various steps are being taken to stop single use plastics so we the young people are not responsible for climate change it will have a greater impact on us take part in your country's climate movement join an organization that works with climate and take responsibility as much as possible use social media as an awareness tool be an agent of change is our time interesting short um compelling message from this young man in the coastal region of bangladesh and of course he's uh, asking for all hands on deck um in being agents of change in uh, for youth in their respective areas I, I think i really like that video for a reason because i've walked those um grounds in the southern part of um, bangladesh and it's quite obvious in your face what the agency of climate action so means. let's let's so, proceed wait, wait. um let me call freeman Freeman, you are the man of the day. Morning, good afternoon, and uh, I don't know if there's good evening for those of us might be joining us from uh, Asia. Now, we are today gathered looking at an important piece, a document for youth engagement. Now, according to the United Nations, it said the world is home to about 1.8 billion young people and also these young people have come together like never before in order to increase or advance a cause and make their voice known. And in the climate change world, young people have done a lot in providing climate change awareness and solution. So looking at this potential, and if you agree with me that the future is for the young people, it is now important like never before to look at young people as agents of change and young people should start getting leadership looking at representation and in line with what the united nations has put together the cef is the climate investment fund has identified with youth and what young people are doing globally, especially in the 72 countries where SEF have their operations. And that's exactly what the SEF looked at, is supporting young people, not just like the regular youth work of just getting young people on board. This is like a two-way thing, partnership with young people at the same time, working with them and supporting their efforts, developing the youth engagement strategy, which is code name yes. So here we say yes, we can. Yes, for sure, the youth are leaders. So the objectives of the of the engagement document for young people is to promote partnership with and among young people. Now, if you look at this objective, young people need to among themselves look at ways of partnering among themselves in as much we are looking for a good way to partner organizations, individuals can do this in order for them to amplify their voice. But they say it takes one to either move, but it takes majority to make cost changes. So partnership with and among themselves is something that the self through the yes document is going to promote for young people and with young people. Also, it's going to promote inclusion in the self-governance and oppression. Now, if you listen to what uh, the head of the SAFE has said, my father, Dante, and Dora, they said the SAFE has operated in a diverse multi-stakeholders nation in every of the operations for those of us who have had the opportunity of looking at documents of the SAFE. You know that the governance is operated by a wide range of people, including CSOs, private sector, indigenous people, and even the academia. 
So everybody come together to, to learn a voice. That is why the, the, the impact of project is being fed. So, but they now looked at it that young people need to be more included. So yes, document is going to increase that level of youth inclusion. If what you can bring to the table is sound, then you have a place available for you in the self through the yes document. So one of the role is for young people to serve as climate fund observer with the self. So you have to monitor country projects, you have to monitor activities that are happening and advise also what should be done. And in the third one objective here is to provide young people with the relevant information and to facil facilitate their access to training, mentorship. Now, looking at information, they said information is key and information is power. So the self will open up opportunity for young people to learn because it is the knowledge you are equipped with you can work with. So for this reason, the self is going to access young people to useful information facilitate certain training and when we go down on the presentation of the document you will see some of the the platforms that have been developed by the self to this year's document to support young people and to partner with them and also capacity building offered by the self like the self is a knowledge center we have one group we have volunteered over time is the trans transformational climate learning uh, program it's T tclp it has also it has helped us a lot covering different topics. Next slide, please. Now, the YES document will help youth better respond to climate resilience and adaptation mitigation in their community. What this means is this. Now, young people have ideas and they have drive and they have this initiative to see things move. But sometimes they don't have capacity in terms of knowledge. Sometimes they don't have capacity in terms of finances. Sometimes they don't have capacity in terms of networking. And this is exactly what the YES document intends to provide for young people across the different regions in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, and especially in the 72 countries where SEF have the operation. Also, young people have the capacity to help the SEF monitor programs. So it's a help youth monitor SEF programs. You might hear as we go on that some of the fund that is housed in the climate investment fund are being implemented by the different multilateral development bank for instance the african development bank and also you you see the world bank groups and also you see the european uh, construction so these are the asia development bank so this fund is there and some of these multi development banks are helping to fast track so young people have shown that enormous energy and that strength using social media and also forcing their government to listen to them. So they'll be very useful. And we felt that with the YES document, it is high time young people get into project monitoring that the SEF is funding. Also, the SEF want to partner and support youth-led climate action as well as program in same member country. The SEF operates basically in 72 member countries and they are majorly in developing and emerging economies. So Africa is there and Asia is there and Latin America, these are major countries. Now, we, for young people, we have always had challenges of funding. So if you have programs that we are raising a lot of support, looking at what the program is, you can be supported with technicality. You can also be supported with some of the financial work to do in hosting and having some of this program get to the grassroots. Next slide, please. Now, the YES document has a very unique structure. It is not only going to provide some of this platform, it's going to look at what the youth is capable of doing, looking at effort on the ground, at the community level, actions that we are currently taking as young people. That is why for somebody like me, though an intern with the SEF, I have actually added experience working at the community level as a civil society person and engaging with different youth bodies and different youth group, drawing knowledge in order to get this document ready. So the structure of this document will try to engage youth efforts. It's a collaboration at the same time support. It's also in this document, there was, they have been, 
there's already a proposed annual budget for youth activities, that is youth programs. In this budget, we looked at important workshops, we looked at important seminars, and we looked at also hackathon and innovative work of young people in the different countries, especially in the 72 countries that the SEF can support. So one of them is that we looked at a biannual conference, a summit of climate that will be held regionally. So in the implementation, the more complications will come to see that by annually we have a, a, a summit for young people to showcase their climate innovation through art, through writing, through community solutions, etc. And also there is a fund, we call it a youth fund, that has actually been developed. This youth fund you know, includes researches, you know, include them um, uh, some, some good programs as we move on, I will explain. Then also, the YES document actually took stock, a good inventory of the different youth engagement work of the different climate investment fronts. We looked at uh, different MDBs, we looked at the AFDB, we looked at the adaptation fund, about 12 funds. We looked at what are their level of engagement, what are the activities with young people. I want to look at what is going to be different. Is the impact made necessary? We discovered there have been a lot. So there have been a lot of commendation, but we realize that there still need more to be done. And that document you will see once it's made available to the public to be useful for including the to young people to engage the other MDBs. So how did we get to some of this information? We did a very critical dex review looking at what is available on the on the internet and uh, we try to also look at what is available with some of these entities and uh, some what some of the youth groups are doing also we looked at uh, secondary youth engagement we were working and following what youth groups are doing in the different countries like uh, there's uh, a group in liberia good in kutunu the hila what they are doing on land and uh, what youth development they are trying to bring up in liberia all these things put together uh, activities we looked at and also we, we, we participated in numerous and a lot of youth webinars. We made direct calls and also sent emails. So the photo there, now, if you look at the structure of the SEF, we are not going to go into a lot of explanation of the SEF. You can just Google through the SEF and see what uh, the SEF is all about. But if you look at this picture here, you see the diversity of people here. This is exactly what um, the, the governance of SEF is. It's uh, a diverse nature. It was set up in uh, 2008 and it's an $8 billion uh, climate fund. And it is purposely set up to empower the transformation in climate resilience, sustainable forest in developing country and energy. And it has happened to be one of the fast tracked climate finance instruments in the world and is working to provide 72 member countries. So I will strongly believe that the voice of the youth and the presence of the youth in line with what the United Nations has seen and acknowledge the voices of the youth for, we are going to do more in the climate investment fund. So this is a unique nature and the youth have been more mainstream in the process. Next, please. Next slide, please. Now, in, we looked at what young people can do. You can see from the photographs there, you see that young people have been engaged in campaigns on social media. For instance, we have the Fridays for the Future. And also we have the Swedish young girl who, who started the climate strike. And also in Nigeria, we have a, a social media handle that says what has changed. And in Ghana, we have the school climate uh, strike. So these are examples of climate strikes that uh, have actually helped to shape in the world. And in, during the COVID-19, there were a lot of virtual and physical meetings here, including collaboration, and some of these want to be more mainstream. Youth have shown enormous strength in climate entrepreneurship, innovation, in ways to work and other climate change solutions. And this is exactly what the SEF have seen, and they want to support more young people to engage globally. So we, we talked about the social media strength and these are pictures just showing the, the, the activities of young people in Twitter and the uh, physical presence and youth to wait. And there is even the photograph to the part youth innovation in ways to wait 
is talking about a biomass system that was developed by some young people in Nigeria, Port Harcourt, made from paper and wood, and is actually to be used in order to, to reduce the use of kerosene. So if young people can do more of things like this, lot, lot, lot more can be achieved when they are really and supported. Now, this is where the YES document comes in. This is what we're looking at as a vision, and this is what we see as feasible. One thing about the self document, the YES document has become one major document has looked at the ability of people with special need, that is the, the people with disability, that some may call it, but they are people of special ability to be more involved, to showcase their solutions in climate change activities. So we looked at what the people with special needs can do and see how their voices can be heard. So this document is paving a way for them to do more with initiatives that uh, we are yet to see or hear. Then also said before, we looked at uh, youth engagement activities in the other climate funds and MDBs and they are lucrative, but we saw that there are need to do more because the future belongs to young people. And also, the self intend to commit to a youth engagement with a proposed project. We talked about that for program. And one of that also is a youth internship program, which I am privileged to, to, to grandfather, to start, I mean to say. You know, so it's going to be a three months internship program with the self. And one unique thing about the self program is this the, the self program will give this young person the opportunity to be involved in the stakeholders engagement unit to put in the youth voices in their weekly meetings and activities so when a youth, a youth sits on that position three months each you will speak the voices of young people because i know you have that good sentiment and it's going to be very helpful in this course and also in the process you are going to grow mentorship and coaching and it will also help with your your grand work also, there is a youth fund that has been established that's going to have a lot of important things to do with researches, going to do with uh, funding uh, some, some summits. We have planned to say it should happen by annual. So the implementation of that small budget that uh, the SEF will, will raise will help more people to be engaged. Also, there's going to be a support for young people, but we discover that if young people do not get involved in certain forum, like the conference of the party, the one they plan, the COP26, for example, they plan in Glasgow, young people need to be well represented. So this document have also looked at the need that a minimum of two persons from the, the self can support two young persons to attend that kind of meeting. And it has been accepted by it and it's a good way in for young people to, to be part of it in the conference of the party and they can deploy such knowledge to the grassroots. Now, this is the final note. Now, through the years, SEF is taking the lead in line with the US support for young people to help countries progressively achieve SDG goals and win the global climate change fight. And how is it being done? the young people have actually started taking the lead. What young people need globally, it's platforms, support, necessary training. And if you can bring the young knowledge and their skill to the same table where decision makers are seated, the young persons will consider the future because we know the climate is actually changing and we want to put in our voice. So more youth inclusion is what we are saying here. What we are saying is that if you support them with some of these finances in their program at the grassroots, which we have put into this year's document, for instance, summit, innovative work, conferences, and some strikes, it will make the government here. For instance, you hear, you hear in Nigeria, there was this NSAS movement that even the government listened. So if you have more youth, more coordinated, then I can assure you that the youth voice will be more amplified and become more successful. So thank you very much. 
I'm going to say use this opportunity to thank the the self for this opportunity to to contribute this document to the operation of youth globally, especially in the 72 countries where they have their operations, and also members of the stakeholders engagement team and the self management and Mafada was the head. He gave us a very plain level grant to work. And I can assure every young person is going to serve on that internship. You have the voice of the youth. They're going to listen to you. And in whatever, more voices will be amplified. And thank you also to peer reviewers who have sent in useful insight that is going to help finalize and shaping the final document. And to everyone who is here, we're looking forward to your comment and we look forward to your contribution. Thank you very much. Iman, thank you, thank you very, very much. Um, you, you've done an amazing job, not just in preparing it, but in ensuring that it's reflective of multiple views, perspectives, and the rich experience, not just in one region, but cutting across other regions. So it's, 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 um, I'm, I'm very, very pleased to hear you um, give a, a, a very um, comprehensive presentation. Um, I think um, Renata, at this stage, Let's put it in um, the full view mode so we can see everyone. And already we are receiving some interest and comment and feedback um, in the chat window. But let's quickly go to our peer reviewers. I'm sure you've given them a lot of meat to chew. Sorry, let me, uh, well, it could be vegetarian meat, not regular meat, it could be vegetarian meat also. Lot to chew, but we'll be very, as you rightly put it, be very keen to hear their views in helping strengthen the storyline and also ensuring the value addition of this as a, as, a, um, as a tool for the SIF, but also for youth um, to improve our engagement. Um, I had put on the line, on the agenda that I was going to call Mr. Joshua Amponsem first from um, Gayo, but um, Alona just hinted me that she would have to dash off at 10 a.m. So Joshua, I hope you will permit me. Let me pass the floor to Miss Alona Kazantseva from the Youth to Youth World Bank Global Youth and um, Climate Network to present her, her views. So over to you, um, Alona. And Alona, as we noted earlier, kindly give us a very brief introduction of yourself because we also want to use this as a way of um, further building our network. Over uh, to thank you, you so much, Dora. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Alona Kazantseva. Uh, I'm working with the World Bank Group uh, within the energy global practice. And actually, like all my career was focused on the clean energy and clean energy transition. But in addition to my daily job, let's say so, uh, I'm also the co-chair of the Global Youth Climate Network, which is one of the initiatives uh, uh, of the white white community, community of the young professionals in the World Bank Group. I've been working on the youth engagement uh, and youth empowerment over the next, uh, last, like around like maybe 10 years. Uh, yeah, and I'm still young, also uh, belong to this youth group. Uh, I've been the youth uh, representative, World Bank Group youth representative to the Y20, uh, which is one of the engagement group uh, of the G20. And I, I, I've been also leading the World Bank Group Youth Summit. So thank you so much for providing this opportunity to review the strategy uh, and share uh, some of the comments. Um, indeed, uh, I would like to echo like you, Dora and Mafalda, that this document is really very important and really very timely. Uh, yesterday, we had the launch of our GYCN program, Climate Ambassador Program, and we had the discussion with 160 young people across the world. Uh, and also, we were pleased that uh, the World Bank uh, MD, uh, Ms. Marie Pangesto, also joined us in that uh, discussion. So uh, during, uh, during the meeting, a lot of young people raised their voice. And Marie confirmed that young people need to be full-fledged partners of all uh, international organizations, including the World Bank Group and probably like the Climate Investment Funds as well. But uh, we have like a few comments uh, for the team's consideration uh, regarding the strategy, the developed document. So the first comment is regarding the target group. Uh, based on the strategy, it's not clear what would be the target, specific target group for the youth strategy, because youth is very broad audience. 
So are you focusing on young people from the, uh, bit, uh, in the age group between like 15 and 24 or between 15 and 32 or even like 35? And also when we did our um, GYCN programs, our main target group uh, is young people between the age of like 18 to 35 and we received a lot of messages from people at the age of 40 45 we're still young we still consider ourselves as youth like why we cannot be part of your programs so having a clear definition will definitely help you to tailor your program and activities the other comment is a value proposition of this strategy because uh, the activities and uh, initiative that you proposed under the strategy, they are very similar to what we have within the other international organizations and other youth organizations. So I think that given the uh, Climate Investment Fund's areas of work, it is important to show how these areas work are reflected uh, in the document itself. Uh, the other comment that we have uh, is regarding the existing like uh, initiatives and programs. Even within the World Bank group, we have quite a few programs and initiatives that are very similar to what you have offered, like in terms of youth engagement, social media engagement. So GYCN probably could be one of the examples. The other example is uh, Connect for Climate initiatives. Uh, and I, I think that this team uh, is doing really very good job in terms of knowledge sharing, uh, in terms of uh, social media engagement and i believe like having uh, a section uh, in the uh, in the section uh, in the strategy document itself like highlighting all these initiatives and what are potential synergies and areas of collaboration between the cif like youth engagement strategy and between existing initiatives uh, across the world bank group and maybe outside the world bank group would definitely strengthen the document itself and uh, the cif uh, youth engagement strategy. And probably last but not least, like my comment would be that you did very good overview of the uh, existing programs and initiatives like across other climate funds and across MDBs. Uh, but within the United Nations, there are uh, United Nations uh, and different like organizations, there are a lot of great examples of initiatives uh, related to youth and climate specifically. Just like to give you like some uh, like uh, highlights, the sus uh, sustainable energy for all, IRENA and like some other like United Nations organizations, they are running a specific youth and climate related initiatives. So maybe like their business, uh, not business, but like the model of operation and the model like how these initiatives are structured as advisory boards to these like big uh, organizations, that's something that uh, you can learn from and you can incorporate in your own strategy and agenda. So Thank you so much for providing this opportunity. I'm very excited and I'm, I look forward to continue working with you and helping to uh, like shape this strategy with some ideas and opinions. So, and probably if you don't mind, I will pass the floor to my colleague, Lea, uh, who will have like some uh, additional comments uh, on the top uh, of what I have mentioned. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Alona, thank you so much for your well-structured and comprehensive comments. Very, very useful. And yes, please, um, Leah, I mean, you as, have as Alona said, I mean, I have similar comments. I mean, this, this strategy is very relevant and timely. And um, I think we all, you know, um, as we work in, you know, in helping young people, I mean, as ourselves uh, to, you know, be, uh, to have uh, their voice heard, um, we all welcome, you know, such a strategy. Um, and so I had a few comments uh, regarding the target audience, um, because, for instance, you want to measure like the demographic data um, as the outcome measures. And I was, you know, my, I had questions about like, how are you going to target um, the participants? Um, and uh, like, is it open to all or is it, um, or are you targeting regions and, you know, even the age range? Um, I think this, uh, I mean, you, you could add maybe more details about that. And um, one other thing was about the outreach strategy. Um, I saw that you intend to use social media, which is of course, uh, I mean, of course, a great way to reach out to young people, but I was wondering if, um, um, 
I mean, as we see for our own uh, competition, um, you know, for the, the Global Youth Climate Network, we had some issues to reach out to, to other people because sometimes they don't have access to internet. And so sometimes we, maybe we miss um, some of them because of that. So I was wondering if you are considering other, other um, alternatives. And um, last, last one was about um, the influence of young people on CIF decision-making. Um, I, I noticed that one of the of the objective is to, um, um, you know, uh, involve young people in CIF decision making bodies. And I was just uh, wondering, you know, how this will translate uh, um, in the in the strategy. So that's it for my comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leah. And if you can kindly introduce yourself, just as um, oh, sorry. Alona, so we can. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, yeah. Sorry. So yes, yeah, so I, as um, I'm like Alona, I'm also a GYCN uh, co-chair. I've been uh, at the Global Youth Climate Network for now two years. Um, but um, as uh, my daily job, I'm, I'm actually a pharmacist. Uh, I'm working in the health, nutrition, and population global practice, um, ma mainly on like um, um, project related to um, you know, access to medicines in Africa. Um, but um, you know that climate change and health are also really related. And even in the pharmaceutical world, we're also very um, aware and interested in, you know, um, uh, ensuring that uh, the environment is protected. So that's, that has always been something that I was interested in. And, um, and yeah, so that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leah, and I'm very glad that the CIF is already partnering with the Y2Y GYCN, particularly on your climate entrepreneurship um, program, which we find very interesting. And I'm also glad as you and um, um, Alona hinted, the Climate Ambassadors Program is one entry point for other youth who are interested in um, sharpening their capacity and their skills expertise. And I think um, it will be helpful if we can send a link, because I know for this year it's already um, filled up. But for your subsequent um, um, open windows, we would be happy to share any information you have to um, get others who are interested to also join. So thank you very much for your comment. We have captured them. If you are not here when um, we are responding to them, we will do a minute and share with you, but we really appreciate your time. So let me quickly go to Mr. Joshua Ampuensem. And um, not to wait, I'm, I'm trying to taper my excitement because Joshua happens to be from Ghana and I did a of course, some good homework on him, and I was quite humbled. So, Mr. Um, let me, okay, just as my father said, let me drop the miss and mister. So, Joshua, we're very, very pleased to have you here, and um, please, you have the floor. Thank you Renata. very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dora, uh, my father, uh, and everyone here. It's also very nice to see colleagues that I've worked with um, also on the call who are part of the community. So, really uh, excited. Um, first of all, congrats a lot for putting up this document. Uh, it's really good. Uh, and I'm excited about it because um, it's not always so easy to put our aspiration on paper and have it documented and have an institution taking responsibility for it. So that is really great. Uh, so thanks a lot for that. Um, my feedback, I will not, I'll try not to repeat what I've been said because we have very uh, little time. Uh, first of all, um, I think that the documents uh, being very good and everything still gives so much uh, uh, credibility uh, to to the youth movement ourselves uh, in terms of impact and also to governments. Um, the work that the young people are doing are coming from a place of frustration and we, we need to realize that uh, we need to acknowledge that um, the work we are doing and all this energy we are putting in is from a place of frustration, a place of fear, a place of uncertainty. And we need to make this very present uh, when we are presenting sort of um, what we want stakeholders to do. Secondly, we haven't achieved much with what we are asking for. Um, and hence, I wouldn't recommend that uh, when we are developing or when we are putting our aspirations forward, we give credit so much to governments because they haven't done a quarter of things that we're actually asking for. It's always been about sympathizing uh, uh, with, uh, with the demands that come forward but not really acting on it. That becomes very essential uh, because we need more to be done. And if we give them that space to feel like they are responding to us, 
uh, that will make them already, of course, sit back and feel like, yeah, we are doing a lot, but they are not really doing a lot. And we need to acknowledge that. Uh, so more concretely, the language around monitoring accountability, uh, we should, uh, I think the document should reduce a bit on that and rather look at how do we make this possible because we've not achieved accountability yet. We've not been able to actually do monitoring as young people. We lack the expertise and there should be more effort going into our capacity to enhance accountability and to be able to monitor. So uh, very uh, sort of um, two things that I will start with. Now, the other part um, is, uh, of course, I'm very happy that um, we have someone who have been through the internship program, really uh, being an ambassador of it uh, and talking so greatly about that. Uh, what I would also say that I hope the internship has a very good budget uh, and it is paid uh, uh, and the, the, the young people who be involved in that uh, are getting some sort of a financial remuneration. Um, this is something that I've come across almost every other event that, I've, uh, I, that I did throughout last year that a lot of the work young people do uh, through volunteerism uh, in exchange for an incentive. And typically uh, the excitement comes from the young person being profiled on a platform or getting some sort of opportunity. And there's a lot of excitement around that. And then soon you realize that they, they also need the money. And of course, uh, being profiled is important, but they also need the money to be able to, of course, um, uh, cover their cost of living and other expenses. And uh, all the international organizations need to start looking into that. Uh, so that is very important as well. Now, the other thing I will talk about is, uh, again, thanks for very detailed events and activities that have been done. Uh, I'm wondering if there are lessons learned properly documented for all these events that are listed in the documents. So, I mean, these are events from 2019, 2018, a lot of references. Um, if you could put together all the sort of best practices, lessons learned, I think that'll be very good to then set the agenda for what you do in, the, in, in this year, 2021, and how to avoid uh, some of the things that take resources, but doesn't give a lot of value back. So if there is a best practices uh, document from these uh, events that have been organized and referenced, that will be very uh, brilliant. Again, I think uh, previous um, reviewers mentioned about what is the definition of the youth. Uh, um, what I want to say is that I don't necessarily feel the strategy speaks a lot to informal uh, young people in the informal sector. Um, and maybe that should come a bit more stronger uh, because uh, I mean, the impacts of climate change affect everyone, but we know that even with COVID and the COVID climate nexus, we realized that people who were more formalized had easy access to resources than those who were not formalized. If you are informal, you don't have a contract. If something goes wrong, I mean, you are, you are literally in a messy situation because you don't have a contract to get salary or anything. So the informal economy around young people need to be a sort of a highlight. Uh, in this document uh, to make it a bit more robust uh, for, for the, those kind of people. Um, then uh, my last thing will be with the concrete detail, the plan, which was in the latter part of the document. I think the $110,000 for uh, an annual budget is too small. Uh, uh, this is SIF. Uh, you can certainly do more than that. Um, so the money needs to be, I mean, if you dedicate, uh, thanks for proposing a youth fund, we need this. We need the funding to go to young people who are innovating. Uh, but I think uh, $50,000 for a year is, is nothing. Of course, uh, we can find that we can fund uh, some sort of a small scale solutions that work. That is great. But we're talking about 72 countries, uh, um, talking about a lot of young people who need support. Uh, and this should go beyond that. And also I think the, the narrative for the fund needs to come out a bit more stronger. What is the story that the SIF uh, wants to tell after one year through this fund? And that needs to define the, who, who we fund and who, who, who doesn't get the funding. And then the second part about international participation, this is important for the COP and all these events. And again, my recommendation would be, this has to be well-defined. Why take someone to COP if the person is not going to be a negotiator? then what is the purpose of that person being at a negotiating conference? Then that value proposition has to be very strong to then present the argument who goes to this event under this CIF, uh, this CIF funding and what is the value for SIF and for the young person being there? Because um, 
from in my experience, a lot of people have been funded to COP. They got uh, very little out of it. The organizations that funded them also got very little out of it. But yet, of course, everybody wants to attend this climate event. So we need to have a very strong value for that. And then lastly, um, I will say that the uh, in terms of uh, uh, the workshops, the trainings, I think they are all great. It is very essential that uh, uh, the strategy makes it very clear that the SIF would give capacity to the youth organizations to lead these events. I think it's about time uh, the previous uh, uh, reviewer said that uh, the need to engage as equal stakeholders, and that is only possible if you're able to trust youth organizations with resource to deliver and you provide guidance. So it's very important that uh, we, we sort of put an end to the current approach where institutions put their fund to their chest. The fund is earmarked for youth, but they still put the fund to their chest and they are still spending it by themselves and only bringing the young people in. We need to move to the point where if you want to organize two conferences regionally per year, identify the right organizations on the ground who have the capacity, give them the money, and provide guidance to uh, uh, those organizations to be able to bring the people together. The, the point is that the organizations having the resource by themselves, that alone is an experience, that alone is growth, that alone allows them to submit an annual financial report, that gives them the possibility to access other funding. But if an organization never gets the chance to do this and they are always um, invited and invited and invited, they are not growing themselves and their capacity. So that becomes very important. I said that was my last statement, but I'll say another last statement, sorry. The, the very last statement is that with the internship, I mean, one intern per, or I mean, how many number of interns per year, it's good, but let's also explore how the SIF could support organizations to host interns in their own uh, local organizations and the SIF provide a financing for that. I'm saying this because I mean, if I look at Africa, for instance, where I'm from, and of, of late I've also been engaging with a lot of international young people across the world, the challenge is that we there's a huge lack for professional development opportunities in the global south. Professional development opportunities meaning that you get a good internship on a project and you build experience. This is not there, but there are projects by a lot of youth-led organizations, but they can't have these interns and they can't hire a lot of people because they don't have the money. So how do we also allow the SAFE to say earmark, okay, we put $50,000 down and organizations could access $200 for interns uh, for a three-month program when they have a project to deliver. That means that the SAFE is not taking responsibility for delivering the training and experience for the young person. The on-ground organizations have to do that. They have to develop the term of reference for what will be the value for the young person coming into the organization and SAFE pays that money that goes into the intent. So this could also be a strategy to really influence and impact a lot of young people without having to have a safe uh, hosting all the interns uh, by themselves. Uh, thanks a lot and I hope I didn't take so much space. Wow, thank you so much, Joshua. This, these are really, really deep, insightful comments and I'm very glad that um, we've got to hear from the horse's own mouth. These are very well structured, well thought through. Um, let, let me come down to it. But I, I feel that we are really given um, quite substantive recommendations that would help us reframe how we could even better scope um, in terms of the support. What are the channels that we could use? Not necessarily, as you really put it, not just being the holder of the resource, but finding ways of devolving the resources to the local communities where um, action, particularly with youth capacity building. So I find that very, very informative and I definitely will capture that and see how um, we respond to that. So um, let, let me quickly pass it um, to, uh, thank you again. And I hope um, we, can, we can speak a bit more Ghana after this um, session is over. Permit me to now go to Mr. F um, let me drop the Mr. Go to Farai, um, um, Farai for his um, comments also. And Farai, thank you for challenging us, for example, with the question you mentioned about putting in a theory of change in the document. Well, 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 thanks, Dora. And um, I think uh, the comments I'm going to give are kind of like just an overview. Um, the more detailed comments are in the document that I actually sent over to you. So uh, 
and I'd like to say from the adaptation fund, actually, thank you for giving us the opportunity to provide comment um, and input into your youth engagement strategy. Um, I think the adaptation fund and the CIF have uh, for a long time engaged with each other and, and we are very happy to continue the partnership with, with, with the CIF. So overall, um, I think we feel that the strategy looks very good. Um, the overall strategy and what, what the CIF is, is trying to do and engage with youth um, is, is uh, I think, is, is a good direction. I think youth are the future and, and, and um, there are a lot of emerging um, either communities uh, or initiatives targeting youth. So youth, uh, I think, are becoming ever more, um, they have been important already, but I think they are becoming um, a lot more, uh, their voices are becoming a lot more louder and being heard. Um, and it's good to note that also some of the uh, elements included in the strategy uh, at least from the adaptation fund side, we're very happy to note that um, some of the things you picked up on are also some of the things we have picked up on and that we have been doing ourselves with youth. Uh, and we've, for example, we've been engaging with the Yungo um, and, and trying to involve youth in our board meetings and the like and, and, and in our projects and innovation facility. So just a few observations, uh, but just in, in terms of the overview, uh, we kind of feel that it's not immediately clear how, how the youth engagement strategy is different from what CIF has already been doing on youth. Um, so it would be good to, to, to really show clearly what is the new direction that the strategy is moving CIF to, uh, where it concerns youth. Um, and in that, in that, what are the existing areas that the CIF has already been engaging in, but that need additional attention that the strategy is addressing. Um, and I think it would also be good to indicate um, from the strategy, it's not immediately clear how long the CIF has been engaged with youth. Um, when I read the strategy, we kind of felt from the examples given uh, under the activities that the CIF and other MDBs are doing with youth, it would appear that maybe the CIF has only been engaging with youth since 2020. Uh, but I think, as Mafalda mentioned, that um, maybe for the past two, year, two years ago, two and a half years ago, the CIF was already engaging with you. So it would be good at least to give that clarity as part of the strategy. An area the strategy might want to perhaps also include and focus on uh, could be youth and digitalization. We know that a lot of youth are very, um, I guess, digital savvy. They use a lot of apps. Uh, they use a lot of technology, um, and I think this could be a conduit to also roll out digitalization into sectors as youth are going to be involved in projects and things like that. Um, we know there are huge gaps in, 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 in forestry, the agriculture sector. Uh, they are falling behind in terms of bringing them um, uh, in the new age of digitalization, which could uh, greatly support and advance the sectors. So maybe that's an area uh, of bringing digitalization, telecommunications and digital services, um, uh, involving youth in that and rolling that, uh, that out uh, into, into projects as well. And then regarding uh, objectives um, that are included under the CIF, we feel the objectives are, are very clear and, 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 and very good, but one of the objectives um, before the, the, the three objectives, there's a paragraph that includes, that, uh, includes the overall goal um, of the strategy. In that paragraph, I think it's under the heading objectives of the CIF uh, Youth Engagement Strategy. Um, the paragraph immediately under that heading seems quite dense. Uh, it's got a lot of information. Um, and, and that's where the theory of change that you talked about, we thought it might be a good idea to include the theory, a theory of change in the strategy, which might help maybe clean up and clean out a little bit that paragraph and, and make it less dense and have uh, a goal that is more clear uh, and, 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 and also showing the linkages to, um, to this overall goal, the, the, the expected impacts um, to the specific objectives and other activities. Uh, the last comment uh, or point that I have is that one thing that um, 
we thought was missing, and maybe it's not missing, but uh, we, we thought it was missing that one of the three goals uh, mentions uh, that uh, youth leaders, well, the intention is for youth leaders to be safe observers uh, in the strategy. And in addition to that, um, the strategy recommends that the CIF um, should increasingly facilitate the opportunity for youth groups to apply to service CIF observers um, and encouraging participation of youth leaders in the um, as, as, as CIF observers. So under the table that has got activities, we didn't see an activity that actually supports this objective. Um, uh, we don't know whether supporting youth to be observers would be via uh, offering them travel assistance. Um, uh, and I heard from, from another speaker that, uh, you know, there's another angle to being CIF observers in terms of youth monitoring CIF projects. So, so all of these maybe could be supported by including specific activities so that it becomes clear uh, what this means exactly. And in turn, uh, we didn't notice this in the budget. So maybe this is something that would also need to be public budgeted for um, specifically um, aligned to those activities. Uh, and the very last point, sorry, I actually had missed one thing, that it would be good to maybe clearly outline the expected outcomes. So it says outcomes, but um, we didn't get a sense of what are these outcomes exactly. That we didn't feel that they are really specified as part of the strategy. Uh, and maybe it might be good to include uh, uh, specific outcomes. Thank you. Stop. Hi, thank you very much. I, I really like the challenge that um, the comments and the feedback you're receiving are posing to helping us strengthen the storyline. But before I pass it to um, Diksha, I, I would want you and Joshua to please introduce yourselves. I, I didn't want to, I have read about you and I, I don't want to introduce you and I don't want to get too excited in doing that. So please let, take another minute to, um, to share who you are with the, the team here and then I'll, I'll give it back to you, Joshua, and then over to um, Diksha. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, I, I forgot that. So, so basically I'm leading the readiness program for the Adaptation Fund. Um, and the readiness program basically provides capacity building and support and uh, all other things related to capacity building, training and the like to uh, developing country parties uh, of the Kyoto and now also of the Paris Agreement. Thank you. Joshua? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so, I mean, I'm a youth activist uh, myself. Uh, and I think Farai, we actually met before at the Adaptation Committee meeting once. Uh, but yeah, I'm also a fellow at the Global Center on Adaptation, and I'm a founder of Green Africa Youth Organization, which is a community-based organization working with young people uh, in Ghana and in other parts of Africa, focusing mainly on the climate change um, and resilience and focusing more on adaptation because, uh, as you would know, adaptation has not been a part of the youth at the advocacy yet. And this is one thing I'm focusing on, making sure that ad ad adaptation becomes a core part of what young people advocate for. So that is a brief introduction, thanks. Pleasure, thank you so much. Um, Diksha, you have the floor. And Diksha, please introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks Dora, I was, I was, yeah, I was going to do that so you don't have to come back to me for the introduction. I, hello everyone, it's, uh, thank you for being here. It's lovely um, to share the floor with so many reviewers and also so many um, youth and youth allies. Uh, so it's 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 quite lovely. I am Diksha. I, I work with uh, the stakeholder engagement team at the SIF and I also work with um, some other teams at the bank uh, in uh, clean energy adoption in um, mainly Ethiopia but all, um, six other African countries as well, Uganda, Ghana, Rwanda and Madagascar and Senegal. Uh, and the idea is to shift um, off-grid households to rely on kerosene to um, clean energy um, technology like improved cook stoves and um, solar lighting and um, I've also worked in ecotourism in, in, in India so it's uh, it's quite lovely to review a very 
um, ambitious strategy and uh, I won't repeat, I, I do share uh, into a lot of comments that reviewers have said already, so I won't repeat those. Um, I'll just begin with uh, the one that I am, I have been most closely associated with, which is the SIP Observers Program, because as an observer of the Observer Program, I, um, my, my uh, comments, my first comment would be that the, the strategy does well to include um, this recommendation, but it's not very fleshed out. So, you know, for I interpreted it as, um, as being, as supporting youth in the monitoring and reporting, the way I interpreted it was uh, encouraging youth to apply for the SIF Observers Program, which are two very different things. Perhaps it includes both. So my recommendation would be that, um, you know, in the table at the end, it's mentioned that um, SIF has already been encouraging youth to apply. And so far, three youth leaders have, uh, in fact, uh, been SIF Observers in the, in, in, you know, over the years. So, you know, the, the, the recommendation should begin with what has actually been done so far to encourage youth to apply. Uh, and then reflect on, you know, what's worked and what's not worked. Is three youth leaders less or more than they were expecting? And then, you know, move, build on that premise kind of to, um, um, to recommend concrete activities that can be done differently. So that's the, that's the encouraging you to apply part. Then after that, it needs to follow with, you know, I have spoken to a lot of observers and, um, and these are non-youth observers. So they're like kind of older observers and even they, um, you know, express challenges with, um, you know, the technical documents that they have to review for the SIF Trust Fund Committee meetings in their observer roles. And, um, and, and these challenges, I reckon, would be, um, could be more amplified for a lot of youth. So, so, you know, not only having youth as observers, but what is SIF going to really do to support um, these youth to, you know, do well in their observer roles is also very important to mention in the strategy, because that's what makes it a strategy to engage youth, not just have them represented in SIF observers, but also to have their voice heard in the trust fund committee meetings. I think, um, I think that's a very important nugget of, of the recommendation. It should be factored in like what kind of trainings would be um, held for youth in order to be able to make them understand these technical World Bank documents, which even we struggle with sometimes. Um, so that's my first um, recommendation. My second actually touches on the budget. Um, the SIF Youth Fund, you know, it's a very ambitious um, idea. I think that it's not very fleshed out in the text as to what it really is. The way I read it is uh, that it's in it's a fund that will um, kind of support entrepreneurship activities um, um, for, and, and also professional development for youth, uh, which is which is very needed because um, I was reviewing some youth entrepreneurship proposals that the bank got for their climate competition. And so many of these uh, excellent, um, you know, proposals had such a small budget that I was just thinking, you know, if we could just support this, uh, we could help this organization scale their very innovative, you know, briquette idea or, or their solar lanterns or um, or their tree planting initiatives um, in their countries. So, you know, and, and I think Joshua touched on this as well, that we shouldn't stray away from, you know, giving budgets directly to you, trusting them with this budget, these youth organizations, instead of being like, we are the safe, we are kind of um, going to be the ones with the wallet in our hands and we'll just hand out little notes to you and you give us receipts. Like that's, um, it's, it's the way things have been done, but I do agree that we need to trust more youth organizations directly with the money. And therefore it will be, it'll be good to have, um, kind of the SIF Youth Fund um, more fleshed out in the text as to what it's going to do and also what's the mechanism that it's going to use to finance because it's a, it's a good pot of money and it can be used um, um, uh, very strategically to you know, empower these youth entrepreneurs who are really doing so much good work in the community in adaptation and mitigation and resilience. So that's my second point. And my last point, um, which also some reviewers touched upon is around communication. So one thing we really struggled with when we were trying to increase, you know, uptake of um, um, solar lanterns and improved cook stoves also in, um, in, in, in the African countries that I was working with is the communication. Like people don't know about the product. They don't know um, about um, the, the, the merits of the product. And that, that was more amplified we saw with, with the youth, you know, because um, engaging youth uh, kind of takes a different approach than engaging in, in than, than what the SIF follows for engaging its other stakeholders. You know, you kind of need more innovative approaches. As per I mentioned, you need um, good use of um, digital and especially social media 
and the role of social media is mentioned in the strategy but but not leveraged in the strategy so i would encourage um, you know leveraging also the role of social media and the best part about this is that it's free of cost you can you essentially don't have to pay anything for these for these social media accounts and sometimes you can even host competitions like essay competitions and climate photography competition and climate art competitions which just can have small prizes but can engage so many youth to really create and um, put their their um climate work out there so i would just encourage the strategy also to look at um social media as a very innovative tool and not a status quo the way we have been um encouraged uh, engaging so far and and finally uh, the last point is that it needs to have a communications budget as well because you know this budget whatever you do for communications now will really set the um, like it won't be lost these these youth who are engaging with the cif and really understanding cif's work because climate finance is a, is a complicated field and it's not easy to just put put this message across that okay cif is an 8 billion fund with like so many so much concessional financing and expect people to immediately be interested as soon as they wake up in the morning so i think that it it needs a communication budget which is very targeted and that this budget whatever is allocated now will really um you know pay off in the future because once you engage you kind of have these people in your net um so that's those are my comments but that said it's a very ambitious strategy um and i'm really looking forward to working with more sif um youth interns in the in the in the future and and thank you um everyone for joining listening to the responses from diksha it seems there's been a pseudo um set of responses to the some of the questions that were posed to us and i had promised you that we're going to have this session for just 1 hour but at the moment we've exceeded by 30 minutes so i'm going to kindly indulge you to um bear with us and to give the um opportunity to for our other participants a minute or two each to quickly reimburse i mean to reinstate any of the messaging that had been um, mentioned or to flag any additional new um issues that um they would want to share and then i will quickly go to um freeman and to myself to respond readily but the most important thing is we do not want to lose any of the um key comments observations criticisms for that matter that But you have i want to um allow kona a minute or two and then prince israel and then i see that sadi too also has his hand up and kasim so we have four people forgive me for being a bit stingy with your time but if you can take a minute or two to quickly compliment any other that being said or to flag any other issues that you feel we could have done a better job at highlighting so let me start with you kona if your connection is good Thank you. Okay. I just want to recommend you guys for the good work you guys have done and I would really like to know as I said before when this uh, when are we going to pick up when will be the commencement of this uh, strategy plan the which is very important because it is a very important document as you all know that we really don't have time. So I would like I would want you to please elaborate on that just a little bit. Thank you. Thank you very much Kona and that would that's a very critical question that you ask and yes we have an answer for you but let me quickly pull a few more um Prince Israel over to you Yeah thank you thank you very much uh, the CFI team you guys have done amazingly well it has been a cry to us working at the grassroots thank you Joshua and Ferrari you guys have done well Freema a thumb up to you guys Dora thank you but quickly uh, let me save time community organizing i think is the way to go getting young people to be organized to address issues of climate change by themselves not these big groups big networks that does not have young people uh, at heart so implementation is a challenge we don't want a robust document as fantastic as this end up in chef so we want the grassroots involvement in this let the youth lead let young people take the drive strengthen our capacity we are at the grassroots we want to drive the action at the grassroots the issue is from the grassroots so let this program focus more on the grassroots thank you joshua that talked about giving capacity to youth yeah, enough of the grammar 
We want action. We want implementation. We want something that will touch down on us. I've been in the grassroots for years, but we don't have support to drive actions. So we want to drive actions. We need to be organized. So this is what this program should do for us. Get us organized, get us the capacity to run, put the support and monitor us so that youth will do the youth business. Don't give it to other people. We want to lead our change by ourselves. Our leaders have paid us. We want to drive this change. Thank you very much. We are ready at Connected Advocacy to ensure that we see this one work. This will no longer be a chef project that does not have impact on the grassroots. Thank you very much. Thumb up to you all guys. I'm grateful. Thank you so much, Prince. And thank you as um, um, you um, rightly um, alluded to what Joshua said that you come from a place of desperation, a place of fear, but a place of hope also. And I like what you said that action is already ongoing and it's a matter of amplifying the work, the capacity that the youth have to offer. And of course, the SIF really appreciate that focus on grassroots, local community participation. It's not just a matter of some lofty global meetings and that's it, no. And that's what we are very keen on ensuring that this document is as practical, it's as simple, and it's easily adoptable, not just for the SIF, but it has a two-way um, benefit. So I really appreciate that you've reiterated it quite strongly. Thank you very much. Let me quickly go to, um, I see Sadat, oh, Kasim and Sadatu. Sadatu, would you take the floor and then I'll pass it to you, Kasim? Yeah. Hello, Dora. Thank you so much. And I'm uh, truly excited to be here. Uh, a colleague just shared this uh, interview right with me earlier today, and I'm so very happy to have joined uh, this uh, conversation. And uh, I'm also equally very excited to have uh, seen that uh, CIF is doing a, a great deal of work in addressing some of the identified challenges that we have in terms of uh, finance, in terms of uh, implementation Can of... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello? Please go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. I, yes. Yes, okay. Sorry, uh, sorry for, uh, to have taken your time. And uh, surprisingly, this is like the first time I'm hearing about SIF. And I'm so excited to be at the platform because I see that uh, SIF is really doing a great deal of work in addressing some of the identified challenges that we're really hammering on in, in terms of uh, uh, providing uh, financial support for climate actions implementations and as well as uh, building capacity for the youth in particular. As I said earlier in the chat, I said I'm the ace focal point, which is Action for Climate Empowerment uh, focal point uh, to the UNFCC for Nigeria. And uh, uh, we are doing a great deal of work and we want to make sure, want to ensure that we have our youth engaged as well as uh, women as well. And uh, we've, we've had a series of programs and uh, I think one of the challenges we've had is actually um, uh, actually evaluating and also tracking progress as to what our youths are doing because they are doing a great deal of work. But how do we really track this progress to also capture it as part of our reporting system? And I hope this uh, uh, strategy document have something that you know, progress as to whatever uh, goals are being set and to how the finances or what are the supports that you are going to provide to this implementation or to supporting the youth activities are going to be uh, evaluated as well. And uh, one of the mandates of uh, the Doha work plan for the UNFCC is to also make sure country uh, also develop their national strategy implementation plan for action for climate empowerment. And uh, I see this as a very key entry point. I'm looking forward to seeing what the document has and I, I'm sure it's going to be very helpful and uh, one other thing in respect to Leah's question is uh, uh, is it the regional or worldwide is it for national government how do they actually how is it going to engagement and one other key thing is uh, how do we uh, actually seek for funds in, in respect to climate action. Uh, I have series and lots of questions, but I, I will put that in the chat. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much, um, Sadatu, and I'm very glad that you were able to attend and as you rightly put it, have been able to um, garner some information about the SIF and definitely we will um, um, try to answer the, um, the questions that you pose. Let me quickly go to Senna. Oh wait, Kasim, sorry, I'm, I'm skipping the line. Kasim, over to you. Okay, um, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Uh, uh, and colleagues, yes. Uh, in the um, so, um, yes, okay. So first of all, let me let me just uh, uh, thank our brother, Freeman, for the great job uh, with the strategy that we have to do. Uh, this is indeed uh, very comprehensive, and I, I really uh, would like to thank you for, uh, for all the energy and uh, the time that you have invested in this. But I also want to thank uh, Dura and your colleagues at uh, CIF uh, for uh, giving young people uh, this opportunity. Most often, uh, you may you realize that uh, most of this consultancy uh, strategic uh, document uh, development of this uh, strategic document goes the older folks. Uh, but uh, I see this uh, as uh, something that needs to be uh, commendable uh, on the uh, on the side of uh, SIF uh, for giving this opportunity to a young person to develop. Uh, this strategy uh, for us. Uh, on a more substantive uh, issues, uh, I have quite a number of comments, but perhaps because of time, I may want to uh, share them with you via uh, email. Uh, uh, but uh, the few comments that I would want to highlight here is uh, with regards to the objectives. Yes, they are very clear. We need participation. Uh, we need uh, capacity building. Uh, we need uh, engagement. These are very critical points that have been highlighted. Uh, in the in the strategy, but one the key thing that I think the strategy has missed is uh, with regards to engagement uh, with the uh, grantee, with the grantees of the uh, SIF uh, grants. Uh, for instance, uh, I know I mean this, it, it's very clear that uh, the strategy talks about engagement with SIF, but beyond SIF, we also have the uh, SIF grantees who are receiving funding and support uh, to implement activities at the at the, at the uh, national level. And these are where young people are, I mean, there are so many young people who are also actually uh, having initiatives that actually uh, would have uh, synergy with whatever uh, uh, projects that are being implemented at the national level. So I'd want the strategy to also take a critical look at this. How does the strategy link and connect to young people who, are, who have initiatives uh, that uh, uh, are connected with the initiatives or projects being implemented by SIP at the national level to engage them. I know, I mean, I have my uh, brother Senna here on the call, and I know uh, JV has been very active with regards to renewable energy projects. Uh, my organization, which is Green Impact International, and also uh, the African Youth Initiative, which brings together in the, a lot of young people with great initiatives uh, on the ground, have a lot of uh, innovations that can be uh, uh, adopted and uh, uh, put into uh, the work of uh, the, uh, at the national level in terms of the projects that are being implemented. And this is a one uh, 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 easy way that we can connect young people and also amplify uh, the works that they do on the ground. Uh, on that note, I also want to mention, uh, I, I think Joshua mentioned this, and this is very critical. Uh, uh, Kasima, uh, give you 15 more seconds. <laughs> Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'll try and uh, squeeze everything within these 15 seconds. But uh, with, with the points of uh, funding, um, you've mentioned in the document that you are going to create the youth fund, which is great. Uh, Joshua had already mentioned that the funds that are allocated for this, uh, this fund that you want to create is minimal. I understand these are estimations, but you really need to uh, look at it so that uh, funds or money that are allocated for young people should be a priority. Because within SAFE, we know a lot of uh, the funding, your capacity in terms of funding, and we know you can do uh, uh, better uh, for us. So uh, these are just a few things. I mean, once you want me to excuse everything within 15 seconds, I think I would want to follow up uh, with other comments that I have uh, there in you. Otherwise, thank you so much uh, for, uh, for uh, this uh, strategic document, and we hope that eventually we'll see things working on the ground beyond just the document. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. And um, as you really pointed out, Kasim, within the SIF, we have currently four programs, the Clean Technology Fund, Scaling Up Renewable Energy Program, the Forest Investment Program, and the Pilot Program for Climate Resilience. And all these um, programs have their own inbuilt youth engagement, or local level based initiatives. And therefore, what we are hoping to do 
with this document is to somewhat streamline all these engagement, all these um, um, ongoing initiatives, and which was flagged by Farai, that there are quite a number of initiatives ongoing, but we would want to elevate the, the image of these one and two to provide space for um, youth who have not been able to access some of these um, spaces for engagement to duly do so. And as um, Diksha also hinted, with regards to engagement of um, youth on the governor's platform, that is where decisions, um, policies are made around the SIP, we have space and give um, ample information for youth to be aware of and to apply for um, the ability to participate as observers, selected observers on the youth. And we don't do our own observer selection. It's an independent process, but it's important that we sh somewhat share this information upfront for you to be aware so that they can in the first place apply. So I really like um, the points that are coming, but I think we still have to try and wrap up. Other than that, for me, I'm enjoying, but it's good that I also keep my word. So that next time when I come to you to request for meeting, you will not say, mm, that person, she says one hour, she always usually means three hours. So let's try to begin to look into wrapping up. Let me pass it to you, but I appreciate that, um, Kasin. And if you are able to, I'll kindly ask you to also send us written comments because we don't, we will still want to ensure that we are fully capturing the points you made about connection with grantees mm -hmm. and that the, um, the um, point that you have made, which um, also um, um, someone spoke a, a lot louder to the um, earlier in, um, recommendations that had been made. So please feel free to send us your comments, Kasim. We are very open to that. Um, Senna, you um, you'll be our last um, contributor and then we'll have to begin to, you know, wrap up. Over to you, Senna. Thank you very much. I very much appreciate uh, this event and I would like to congratulate our colleague for putting together such a wonderful document and that we appreciate. Uh, like uh, Dora, you have been doing such a great advocate to the point that uh, most of the points I have, you 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 are be saying them so clearly. So uh, thank you very much for that clairvoyance, as we say in French. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, uh, I I didn't follow very well uh, Cassie's point, but I think uh, my my key point uh, evolved around uh, the current engagement of young people in the CIF programs. So the same they did to map out what are some of the initiatives how young people are involved in, within the MDBs, the multilateral development banks. Uh, that would be great to have part in the document about how young people within the four programs in the countries, be it the, uh, the SREP or the FIP, etc., in countries, do we have some good practices where young people were involved in one of those project, projects there? Because that was one of our key demands uh, in, in the meeting in Accra. So, uh, because countries will be receiving a lot of money already. Mm -hmm. So if there can be a mechanism through which we can already support youth participation at that level, at national level, I'm sure this has already been raised. I'm just highlighting it. That mm -hmm. would be very great. Uh, number two, I, I think uh, Kasim raised the point also about, and someone else, eh, about supporting youth organizations. It's very important. Uh, and I, I appreciate the whole thing, but as you can see, where there is meeting, it's clear fund is there. But where there is about supporting youth initiative, like the youth fund, it's, uh, it's not yet filled. I mean, like the, the, the space is, is blank for now. Uh, just to say that, that would be great that we find ways that through this uh, youth engagement strategy, we support youth organizations uh, on, on the six or five continents that we have. And in Africa, we have the African Youth Initiative on Climate Change doing an amazing work. How do we support this youth organization so that uh, issue about participation representation can be uh, easily dealt with? Um, and uh, I think finally is about, uh, I didn't see anything about the governance in the document. Uh, of, of course, I, I am against creating of networks, uh, but uh, if at all possible, uh, that would be fine to have something like uh, a youth advisory board, something very specific, either to the youth engagement strategy or uh, to, to the whole CIF, if at all possible. Um, and finally, I think we, we have already um, drafted some, some projects about the need to support African youth and other continent youth as well, uh, or let's say the global youth capacity when it comes to climate change. Mm -hmm. I know you all probably know about the youth, youth program in, in, in uh, 
the Africa Youth Climate Hub in Morocco, but that's not sufficient. It doesn't fill all our points. So that would be great if you can have something specific. So uh, about the African Youth Climate Leadership Academy that we put forward, uh, mm -hmm. I, will, I will be sending some written comment with uh, Gawusu, and we hope this can help to put the document. Again, merci beaucoup, Merasse. Thank you very much. Namaste. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I, I really like the challenge about the Youth Advisory Board. Um, we kind of have a pseudo um, um, youth platform created, but I think um, if you find it useful, we could always um, give it a space to expand the number. I know that, so, for example, you have so many WhatsApp groups, but um, it will be um, up to you to let us know that we are not adding to an already filled space for um, platforms. But um, let me give Freeman, who was the primary author of this document. F Freeman, I'll give you three minutes, forgive me, but you have to answer every question with 15 seconds. We have about six questions, but please do not hesitate. Um, if any question you ask or any, recommendation you made is not mentioned, please note, but we will be sending a, um, a response matrix or a comment matrix, which captures all the key comments that have been made, both in writing and um, um, verbally today, because that's going to be our guidance for um, finalizing the document. So let me give um, Freeman three minutes, and Freeman, I'm starting my clock. Three minutes to do well to uh, tackle the major um, pointers that were made that falls in line with um, the document and then I'll do my part and then we should wrap up. If I was going to give you lunch, which would have been ideal, then I would have kept going. But as it is, it's just improper to take more than, far more than I asked for. So over to you, Freeman. Yeah, thank you, Dora. You're already taking one minute for my time. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to say thank you to everyone and uh, we are very glad the participation and the, the kind of uh, interest everyone has shown. Now, some of the points that were raised here, we must say uh, they are well noted. Uh, the essence for this kind of meeting is to get this kind of external input and broad level of um, suggestions and comments to improve on the document. But importantly, uh, I have to respond quickly. On the age limit, uh, we are going to look into the document and see how best, because uh, we have started seeing people who say at 50, but they are youth in mind. So we intended that uh, we keep that for a little bit, but uh, I, I see that two of our reviewers has mentioned that, that we should go to see how we can have a limit for it. So internally, that will be looked into. Also from Yila, it was as a place of training and capacity. If you look at the year's document, it's basically centered on capacity building for youth and also what the self can benefit also from. So there are a lot of places for capacity. When we say coaching, mentoring, and the uh, programs that the self is involved in, these are capacity building to support youth work globally. Then on the internship program, yes, uh, if uh, for the reviewers and those who had, uh, Joshua mentioned this, for the internship program, the SEF is already determining the, the payments and all the funds. It's not going to be free because uh, it's part of what we, we discussed in, uh, in the course of uh, writing this document. So it's going to be a well-paid youth internship program. So it's not a volunteerity that we have only seen. Recently, you see a fine work done by you that takes your time, that takes your energy, then they will put volunteer. So it is not like this uh, free youth movement anymore. So also for the youth fund, for the youth fund that will be raised, uh, we just proposed something, but the youth fund is kept a little bit blank. That money will be more than that. And the management will be this. Uh, we're looking at an opportunity where young people and the self, the self will have a, a a number of two, three, also young people from selected from their work at the background with their experiences, just like the way reviewers are brought in, will be brought into the advisory board to manage this fund. So the SEF Youth Fund will raise a document of implementation, wherein even the, the SEF will, for instance, maybe have maybe like a $70,000 a 70, yearly, we are still going to use those groups to raise funds 
because there are a lot of funds available whereby this team can go raise money. So we agree and we know that that money, but we are just starting, is going to run from January to November to December. So this this self activity is going to be from January from January to December. So it's going to be a yearly thing and it's subject to review and improvement. Then also they talked about leveraging on social media communication. Yes, then we are looking at social media, then communication for budgeting by Tiksha. Yes, we are going to uh, add a budget cost for communication because it is key because if you are going to talk about youth, you need to publish this information, you need to communicate. Then on the last note, importantly, this document is not focused on social media engagement. The self and some youth expert and youth group are going to put a very good team on the ground made up of young people to look at what young people are doing on, in the grassroots. So the, the, the funds and some of these uh, support is going to be looking at people working at the grassroots. It's no longer this idea of maybe one big organization just collecting all the money. They look at who is on the grassroots and you give them. So this is direct looking at what young people are doing at the grassroots. Then finally, uh, this is really final. On the self-observers uh, process, we, it is true that uh, young people have actually not served in uh, properly, properly, because we have two, three uh, youth people, but they didn't get into it as maybe youth leaders, but they were young people. So we are now looking at avenues whereby young people will have a reserve seat so that maybe in uh, contracting it to maybe resolve or any of the organization who's going to do the selection process, mm -hmm. it will be specific that it is for youth organizations. So a seat has been looked into for self and also Disha made mention of some of the limitation whereby the review of documents and young people don't have this capacity. So a capacity mm -hmm. is going to be built for young people to serve as observers and also in the governor through programs across board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Freeman. And um, I think as it stands, um, we would look into wrapping up in another three, four minutes. I, I would re-echo what you had said about acknowledging all our esteemed guests who have provided us that the drive to ensure that as and Prince said, we do not develop this as a shelf document, but one that would, um, again, quoting Kona, that would hit the ground running. The good part is, um, as Farai mentioned, activities are already ongoing but would hope to streamline it, making it more structured, to give space to <clears throat> answering to some of the questions that I'm seeing in the chat right now, say from Sada to who's asking how else she could um, partner with the SIF. Clearly, um, all the, I'm very pleased that all the nuggets of areas of improved engagement you have found useful, and I've also challenged us on one key area, which is, um, is, is this the right word, devolving? or ensuring that we do not be the, the sole conduit for providing some of this support, but we are able to partner with other youth organizations or other um, 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 departments or units on the ground who would then somewhat mirror some of the initiatives that are being proposed. For example, as um, Joshua rightly pointed out, it shouldn't just be the safe um, um, hosting one intern. Perhaps we could partner with other of our uh, client countries and see how best we can somewhat incentivize interest in um, setting up um, um, internship programs, which would have ripple effects in terms of providing needed capacity on the ground. Again, I'm challenged by the fact that it's not that just the safe bringing in resources, but this is the space for partnership. The already um, 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 slew of um, very creative youth initiatives ongoing. It would just be a matter of us being able to identify a better partner to help elevate or scale up some of these creative initiatives. And I really like one point that had come out earlier with the Climate Entrepreneurship Program, which um, the World Bank Youth to Youth is supporting. For me, um, initiatives like hackathons or some of these call for proposals on targeted areas for engagement give space for more of these creative um, um, initiatives to be captured and um, scaled up within the safe so that we just don't do what we are um, doing, but also give space for creativity and innovative approaches. I like one point that had come about with um, 
um, initiating digital digitalization in sectors. And that's one area where we can always bank on youth expertise. So I, I think um, that recommendation is um, pretty well accepted. And um, with um, the point that I had made earlier, if we try to answer all the questions one by one, it might take a bit more than um, you can accommodate in terms of time. So we will do a summary of all the key messages that we've received from you, some which you'll be sending. For example, I challenge Kasim to send um, at any additional comments in writing. We will consolidate these and ensure that the strategy is well informed and is able to um, take on board all your very fine recommendations. One point, of course, it's um, with a paid internship. Usually when you say internship, it's not like to be paid at the level that um, a full blown um, position is paid, right? But we ensure that the part of the internship does not come as a, at a cost in terms of providing the, the intern the space to be able to duly connect, the space to be able to get access to the research space, um, opportunities, being able to all the nitty gritties that goes into empowering because um, the internship is more of a, it's a um, the, the intern benefiting more from the resources that are being provided but creating, giving the intern the space to explore, to be aggressive in using all the networks and opportunities, using the platforms, using the, the resources, as well as using the technical expertise in-house to, uh, to their full advantage. And as Freeman Riley pointed out, we are looking at possibly having a three month um, well-structured internship, as the, God, the grandfather said, moving from region to region, at least within the CIF itself, but providing the space for that uh, much more um, ripple effects with um, quoting Joshua again, having other youth internship um, initiatives hosted in the countries that we're working in. Um, the ideas are quite a number, uh, but you also agree that um, in the space of climate finance, one issue is um, the crunch for funds. So it's a, it will be a matter of maximizing the limited resources that are available, but ensuring that they are effective, they're tractable, and they're replicable. And so that is where your expertise mm. on the ground comes in extremely handy. So that said, permit me to at this stage to thank you immensely for a very, very um, really thoughtful session, which has helped us to, again, re-establish the fact that you find this document use, useful, not just for you, but also for the CIF. We find it very, extremely timely and useful, as my father has said. We will be sharing the finalized report with you, but most importantly, we are keen to keeping this network that we've started here today. Obviously, and, and I, um, I, I quote again um, a saying in my country that if you are the one creating a road, you would not know that you are veering off course. It's the people around you who can help you ensure that you are staying on course. So it's important that you continually provide us insight, you continually provide us input, you help point us in the direction of newer thinking mm -hmm. on areas of engagement. So. If given the opportunity, I would have said we should keep going, but in the interest of time, and also with the hope that if I come knocking again another time, you give me the space, let's wrap up with much thanks. And I hope we, you would um, welcome the, the revised draft when we send it to you, but please consider our doors open and we are really awed and thankful for your time. So thank you everyone. And please have a wonderful rest of the day and a wonderful weekend. And thank you for your partnership and the network.